welcome to a new episode of Tesla Podcast. Subscribe to the channel, like and share the episodes you like the most. Tesla Podcast also has a website which you can find in the description, Instagram, Facebook and TikTok for all updates and news. Today I wanted to talk about a Norwegian black metal band formed in 1991 called Enslaved by 13-year-old Ivar Björnsson, real name Ivar Skuntorp Persson, born on September 27, 1977 in Etne, Norway, and 17-year-old Grutle Schelson, real name Shetil Vedbeck Grutle, born on December 24, 1973 in Svio, Norway. They took inspiration for the band's name thanks to a song containing an immortal demo track, entitled Enslaved in Rot. Thanks to thisisblackmetal.com we discovered more about these two incredible musicians They created a band with progressive rock nuances and not only. Ivar started to listen to music at 5 years old, after his grandfather gave him as a Christmas gift the cassette of the famous band Keys. From this point, he started to listen bands like Wasp, Anthrax and Venom, but with Bathory he saw the light. When he was at school, he tried to share his biggest passion for metal with other kids, but no one seemed interested and started to feel lonely. This didn't discourage him to play music and created a band with some friends. About Glutle, he said he is anti-Christian and non-religious and he likes fishing. When Ivar was rehearsing with his first band of Nazis, he met Glutle that was rehearsing in the next room. But that was not the first time they met. Their first meeting was at a concert in April 1991, while Glutle was stage diving and fell over Ivar's head. We could define this meeting as coming from heaven, um, <clears throat> on the head. Since that day, they always remained united in music. First band they formed around 1990 was called Phobia, together with Heimfrode Hansen, real name Heimfrode, born on 25th March 1972, drummer. Kai Andre Abrahamsen, guitarist, Snorri Eriksen on bass, and John Harold Apeland on keyboard. Ivar was on guitar and keyboard while Glutle on bass and vocals. They recorded two demos in total The Last Settlement of Ragnarok and Feverish Conversions, respectively released in March and June 1991. First Phobia demo contains three songs Frame of Mind, Tie Rotten Flesh, and The Last Settlement of Ragnarok. I tried to find on the web their demo to listen, but I didn't find it. The second demo contains three tracks. Fogos Uncertainty, The Last Settlement of Ragnarok and Feverish Conversions, recorded and mixed at Select and the Studio, logo made by Thomas Haugen, known as Samot. For people who lost the episode dedicated to Emperor, go check it out now on Deathblow Podcast. It starts immediately with a dark atmosphere with the keyboard and a sinister effect. Then the guitar starts with a truly typical black metal riff. Moments of speed alternate with dark drone style doom metal moments. The guitar performs a vibrato to give a dark symphony and a very important dissonance in black metal. Glutless voice with a scary glow makes everything infernal and spooky. An evil laugh to give a satanic touch. The second track begins with an arpeggio and keyboard, which I admit is very well executed. A nice intro. This track has some doom influence and you can tell by the slow drums and dissonant riffs. The keyboard gives that dark tone and the low tuning guitars are very well done. The riffs are very interesting, I like the sound of the bass and guitar arranging a dark melody. Phobia mainly focus on dark and ambient atmosphere, too bad that the audio quality isn't great. The growl voice is always very powerful and of good quality, good job! The third track begins instead with a guitar riff and bass, the biggest influence they have here, Darkatron, Darkatron and Darkatron. Have I repeated this enough? This cross between black and death metal with doom nuances is very good. Grootless voice proves to be of quality and he has a remarkable talent. He describes the pain and darkness perfectly in his voice. Hints of keyboard here and there and then the speed of the drums and guitar increases. They remind me a lot of Two Shall Suffer, isn't it? Phobia after this release split up. Ibar and Grutle formed the Slade, their actual band, while I'm through the form the Theatre of Tragedy. The band needed a new drummer and entered in contact with Trim Tolson, real name Kai Johnny Solheim Mosaker, born on 26 February 1974. This is what he said in one interview. 
I first got into drums when I saw a KISS video when I was around 10. But when I finally started to play myself, I was very much into Slayer and Creator and influenced by that kind of drumming. About his first meeting with a slave, this is what he remembers. I knew Ivar from he was maybe 10 years old and had been playing with him for a while before we started enslaved. Ivar played with Grudle in a band called Phobia and when that band ended, he asked if I wanted to join them and started a new band with a new direction of music and I said yes. With this lineup, Enslaved recorded their first demo called Nema recorded on 6 to 7 December 1991, always at the Slack then Lead Studio, through cassette format like the first two demos. The title is simply the word Amen spelled backwards. They limited this release to 30-50 copies only. This demo contains four songs. Rob Redoff, Father Born, that means Our Father, spelled backwards. Himneshir Fatakir, that means heavenly riches in Icelandic language, VDO, and Ode to Darkness. On this demo, Ivar decided to call himself Darkness, while Trent Tolson chose the name K. Johnny. Analyzing the arrangement, Nema starts with a good total voice and dark keyboard with a drum. It seems to be witnessing a ritual, very atmospheric and ambient. The demo is reminiscent of the works that Bull did after 1994. Background noises and the increasingly disturbing voice, great black metal work, a costly bass as well as the beginning of the drum and guitar, enslaved no name for speed but rather to describe horror atmospheres, painting a canvas with music. Now that's the goal of black metal. The influence of Tarkatron can also be felt in this demo. Distant guitar solos with a reverb effect that should never be missing in black metal or sustain on the keyboard. This one uses the sound of the organ to record places like Transylvania and other ones full of legendary stories. Grutless voice becomes more and more violent and the guitar arpeggio to give a battalion touch to everything. Trim's fast drumming proves that he has a technique that he has studied to perfection. The guitar pieces are very well elaborated in structure. The solos are very well studied. There is a hint of the vals rhythm, but this dance ends soon, like an imminent death of joy. Beautiful keyboard piece at the end of the demo. The ghostly journey doesn't end here. There is a hint of Tangerine Dream influence, especially albums like Faedra. If you haven't listened to it, you won't regret it. Instrumental album with very well articulated sound effects. 1992. Many things were happening during this year. New bands were recording and even enslaved were ready with new material for a new demo. This time they published Yggdrasil, recorded and mixed at Micro Music on 28 to 29 June. The producer was Svein Schoen. Yannicke Wieshansen designed their logo instead. She was really famous to even create cover albums and logos for black metal bands. The famous one was Burr Covers, Demo 2, Burr, Detso Mengambar and Oske. Coming back to Slave, they have changed nicknames this time, Darker and More Evil. Grutle becomes Earl Grutle, Trim Tolson, Lord of Mayhem and Ivar H.M. Daimonion. Yggdrasil contains six songs in total, Heimdaller, a god, Son of Odin, and nine different models. The god of surveillance, Alfar Odin, that means Allfather Odin, Intermezzo, instrumental track, Halval, Niundaheim, in English, Ninth Word, and the Winter Kingdom, Opus 1, the sound of Yallarhorn, another instrumental track, Yallarhorn, means loud sounding horn that was used by Hamdaller. Here Ivar explains better his work in this demo. There is a story from beginning to end, but it's also encompassing some of the myths around Heimdall. There is this mystery and mythology about his relationship to Odin, this relationship and mystery around who is his mother, is he the father in the family? Some people have translated those and predicted the new god to take over after Odin. It's bouncing a little bit back and forth all over the place. Sometimes it's seen from the perspective of Odin, since they are so tightly connected. 
Sometimes, like the title song, it's a personal interpretation from our perspective of what this deity represents. So much of it continues, it's just a riddle that keeps on growing, and I'm going to keep following it. I think some of the strength in developing all these weird little words that we do on the albums is to have that sort of individual perspective and sharing. It's like music in a sense. There's no right or wrong, there's just wondering and sharing of these mythologies. Listening to this demo, you see the purest and mayhem-like black metal, primitive, rough riffs and fast. Glutless voice becomes increasingly high pitched and infernal. The keyboard makes a unique atmosphere in this Yggdrasil. Fast guitar solos, totally opposite to previous demos. It reminds me of Count Grishnak's sound on his albums. The bass, as an introduction for the guitar, is very well done. The demo has a mystical sound with echoes and reverb effects. The cross between Grishnak's sound and mayhem is very interesting. It alternates with moments of absolute speed on the drums and slower moments. Here you can see the brutality and rawness typical of black metal very well done tempo changes. Mayhem sound is very present throughout Greek Brazil. The keyboard with various effects from organ to violin give a magical touch to everything. This guitar solo with the keyboard in the background is very well structured. The track intermezzo with the organ gives it a spooky touch. It aims to give a tone of darkness to the music. It's really a shame this sound isn't good, but for everything else the voice and instruments succeed well in the aim of giving a poor quality and to be part of black metal, the true essence of black metal. As for Yggdrasil, instrumentally it's very flat in my opinion, there aren't many changes, it appears to be repetitive in certain aspects, but all in all they achieved a good result. Above the lyrics, they are written in Icelandic and there are references to Norse mythology and various characters. Unfortunately, some parts of the translation are incomplete and are very difficult to translate. Something important happened in 1992. They came into contact with Uranimus. He was managing the helmet shop at the time and a slave that have told in various interviews how important it was for them to come into contact with him. Ivar explains better in this interview. The contacts with Uranimus, for example, he was a mentor in many ways. We weren't a real black metal band in the sense of the bands he was dealing with, like Mayhem, themselves or Dissection, so obviously there were never discussions about Satanism and things like that. We were interested in them and with the fact that I was so much younger than him, maybe it wasn't even natural to have philosophical discussions with me. He never tried to recruit us. He had his ideas and that was it. He was enormously proud of the black metal scene, of the scene that he was at the forefront of and he was very open and inclusive, the opposite of what people think today of the stereotype of the extreme black metal band, far-right people, elitist. And then he took the guitar with him when he went around the country to meet his friends and it was a bit like workshops, he asked me, okay, let me hear the new slave songs. I played and he told me, that riff is very beautiful, show me how to play it. But above all, the most important thing for me was that he gave me like master classes by showing me some of the techniques he had used on The Mysteries Dom Satanas, which, you know, for me remains the greatest black metal album ever done. But it's here that Ibar explains better. It was fantastic, contrary to what one might believe. It was just really a musical journey that was really intense. Glutle introduced me to the underground. He had already been pen pals with a bunch of people around the world and these guys in Norway. Again, coming back to not having that sort of ideology and not being into that occult stuff, that was something that we ever discussed with them. It was all about the music. One of the first surprises and the thing that really stuck with me for all the years after is coming in there, Euronymous was a big musical hero for me. He was a guitar idol and still is and asking him for recommendations. What should I listen to in death and black metal? He said, the stuff you already got covered. Then he gave me a bunch of prog rock albums and 70s electronic German music and stuff like that, which I kind of didn't see coming, but I was really eager to check it out. 
In July 1992, Enslaved, proud to have known the leader of black metal scene, signed a contract with Dead Like Silence Productions, managed by Uranimus, of course. So after that, they entered in the studio with the new music and it's the time of Hordain's Land, recorded in 1992 at the Louis de Lofte, Erlen. This is an EP, but originally was released as a mini LP format under Candlelight Records and released in May 1993. This EP was produced by three different producers, Reinhard de Thorsen, Knut Björnberg Karg, and Shetty Lulland. They still used the logo designed by Jannike and there are three songs only. Slaget is Kugen Bottenfer, in English, I hope the pronounce is good, The Battle in the Forest Beyond, Alfar Odin, Old Father Odin, and Balfur, the pronounce, I don't know if it's correct. The intro with the keyboard gives a mystical effect and the guitars that are added are something spectacular. Great job, Slade. We start with a super fast and very well executed drum set. Glutless voice is desperate and dark, typical of the black metal sound. I like the trolls used at the beginning. Very good. The riffs are reminiscent of Mayhem's The Mysteries and as for the speed, a major point like that is accompanied by a mysterious atmosphere and is well done. We are there as a level. The sound of the recording is much better and you can hear all the instruments well. I really like this song Slugget is Kugen Bottom for the drum stop like the eye of the storm. And only an acoustic arpeggio can be heard in the distance accompanied by the distorted guitar. Glutless voice is spoken for a while and reverb is heard to give a statement to the dark mood of the song. The technique used by Trim Thorson is reminiscent of a lammer even in the tempo changes during the song. The sequence of chords with the keyboard are very beautiful. 13 minutes of masterpiece, the first song. Very good. The second track is very reminiscent of Count Grishnak's playing, his first album and beyond. It starts with the guitar playing truly incredible riffs. Glutless voice always mean and brutal. The drums aren't as fast as the previous one, but they perform a tempo change to make everything really atmospheric. The background organ and various keyboard effects make us imagine a valley surrounded by mountains and snow-covered places. The distorted riffs are good and create a nice structure with the bass. Their musical influences are clear and well-defined, mayhem and bull. The third track has very similar influences to Dark Throne. It seems that they choose these three tracks to pay a significant tribute to the three most important bands of the black metal scene. The piano in the background and not very fast waves point to the atmosphere. The guitar solo aims to give a touch of progressive and dissonance. The sound of the piano with a low sound makes you think of forgotten places and horror atmospheres. Then from dark it only turns into mayhem again with the style of the mysteries. Very good. The drums speed up and then slow down to give space to acoustic arpeggios to give a Patorian touch and the keyboard with the chords towards the end proved to be cutting-edge musicians. What else to say? Enslaved, the great job. Regarding the text, it talks about ancestors who fought against the Christians, Hordaland, Rugaland and Arger's men, battles that they had to fight and then return home, rise with glory and never betray their Scandinavian origins. They even talk about Odin, the old father, the stronger of all gods. For the next album, Enslaved choose to try to work with one of the most important Norwegian producers of the black metal scene, and obviously I'm talking about Pitten, real name Ari Kundbin, of whom I also did a short session last month. Go check it out. Same lineup and a curiosity. Hella Mer, Mayhem's historic drummer, collaborated with them as a drum coordinator, but not only him. Also, Padden of All the Funeral, as mixing and engineering the tracks. Recorded between 1993 and 1994 at Gallen Studios in Bergen, legendary place of the mysterious Dom Satanas recording of Mayhem and Bur, first albums, published under Death Like Silence on 22nd February 1994. The title of this one is Bikenlir Beldi. 
that means Viking Empire and contains five songs. I hope the pronounce is good. Live and live under Hamri. In English, live life under the hammer. Vetrar not means winter night. Midgard's Eldar instead is Midgard fires. Heimdallr, I explained before, and Norbegel. It means Norwegian. Cover art designed by Asle Birkelan and Janneke, the logo is dead. All songs are written in Icelandic except Heimdallr in all the notes, and the whole album is dedicated to Uranimus, died in 1993. How was possible for a slave to publish under DSP despite his death? It's simple. This is what Glutle admitted in one interview. Candlelight didn't release our first full-length album because they never were supposed to release more than the mini LP in the first place anyway. You see, we had a contract with DSP, then you can say that Lee and Uranimus made sort of deal. Lee released the mini LP. The intro of Viking Nirveldi, the album, is mystical with keyboard effects to give a magical and sinister touch to the album. The guitars start with no super fast drums and trims double pedal effects give a more than vivid memory of the mysteries. The sound of the entire album seems to be recorded in a huge recording room with the reverb effect. I really like the dissonant chords they use. They are very well made and it is an album that does not disappoint at all at the start. Glutless voice is as distant as a demon watching his next victim. They want to give strength to the instruments rather than to the boys. A great tip from Pitten perhaps? Halfway through the song, Doom Metal opens up. The drums slow down and the guitars hint at a bull arpeggio. The similarity of the musical structure is very clear. The keyboard starts playing a horn effect, the bass does a little solo and acts as a bridge to the other instruments. And the race starts again with the fast drums and guitars, very good, then starts fast straight away, guitar, bass and drums, Glutless voice as beastly as ever, the similarity with the bull and mayhem is very clear, these dissonant chords are very well done, this album is a masterpiece, the structure of the guitar is similar to that of Uranimus, a fast arpeggio and single notes, the keyboard reminds us that the experimental genre of Tangerine Dream and Crowd rock are very important for black metal, especially for the dark atmosphere. The guitar solo takes us to the remote places of Scandinavia and it's a clear tribute to Uranimus. Good job! Contains even a tribute to Bathory. The keyboard creates effects with the acoustic guitar. Then the actual song opens with the drums and guitar as a backdrop. There is a union between the experimental and metal. Classical music and metal very often go hand in hand, and these drums variations remind us to experiment in any situation. Then it starts with a double pedal and the classic blast beat that dominates every black metal song. The bass plays a solo together with the guitar, and on a technical level they demonstrate that they are trained professionals in the musical field. Everything slows down and becomes doom. The guitar and keyboard with the drums, which using only the drum creates a sort of ritual. Keyboard and synthesizer create very interesting experimental effects. Then it starts faster again like before. The only flow is that songs are too long, but otherwise is very good. Heimdallr was even on the previous record, so they recorded it again in a professional studio and they did a great work. Lyrics themes of Viking Valdi is a description about Midgard that translated means Middle Earth, snow capped mountain peaks, desolated places and dark forests, nocturnal singing and dancing in a freezing winter and there are references to Tolkien's novel, The Lord of the Wings. Thor's Hammer and Gjallar Horn are two references from Norse mythology. I spoke about the Gjallar Horn previously, while Thor's Hammer was used by the god of thunder to destroy anything placed in front of him and was capable of returning to the hands of the person who wielded it and shrunk until it became a necklace. Then, of course, he talks about the god Heimdall who blew his horn and had a horse called Gultopl nocturnal creature that hears everything. 
There would be so much to say more about the slave, but it's enough for the moment. Instagram, Facebook and TikTok for all updates and news. Deathblow Podcast website if you don't have social media. Subscribe, like and share my video and listen even on Spotify and other audio platforms. See you soon, guys!